Just a few years ago, I was right where you are, trying to figure out how to build an affordable greenhouse structure. Now, just a few years later, and I've built four of these greenhouses that I'm standing in right now. And in this video, I'm gonna show you an affordable DIY greenhouse, so easy, anyone can build it with no experience or prior knowledge. You'll also learn how to build scissor door end walls, install a Wi-Fi controlled irrigation system with rainwater catchment, and make sure you watch it till the end because I'm going to show you how I built all this and didn't pay a single dollar and you might be able to also. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Chef Mikey. Welcome back to Chef's Harvest Farm. I'm a former executive chef who turned my gardening hobby into a full-time business. When I started growing food, I knew nothing about gardening. I also knew nothing about building greenhouses. I started with one little raised bed box garden that I filled with soil that I bought at Home Depot. And I started growing seedlings under grow lights in my basement. My first greenhouse was a swing set that I found in the trees behind my house. I'll go over a few of the options that I researched before I built this greenhouse, but if you wanna fast forward to the build on this greenhouse, you can fast forward to this time in the video. So I bought some greenhouse plastic from greenhousemegastore.com, threw it over the top of the swing set and held it down with bricks and rocks or whatever I could find at the time. And this got me by for a little bit while I taught myself to grow food. But as you can imagine, there were many days when I'd come home from work and the greenhouse plastic had blown away. So I started researching how to build a greenhouse. I had very little money to invest. I looked at the cheap Amazon and Walmart options, but I needed something a little more heavy duty. At this point, I'd kind of started selling veggies at work and I was kind of flirting with the idea of turning it into a business. So I knew I needed something that would be dependable, stand up to the elements, strong enough to use the structure for trellising and possible snow loads. So I started looking at DIY options. I saw some people on YouTube making hoops out of PVC pipe and then installing greenhouse plastic over the PVC pipes, and this seemed like a great option for me. I thought it seemed like something I might have the skill set to figure out, and it seemed like I could purchase all the materials rather easily, but as I did more research, I learned that when PVC and greenhouse plastic touch each other and are exposed to UV light, there's a chemical reaction that will degrade the greenhouse plastic very quickly. And also, PVC is not made to withstand elements, so over time it'll degrade rather quickly from being exposed to extreme heat, sunlight, and cold, and your structure will most likely not be usable anymore in just a few short years. So then I saw the cattle panel greenhouses, and I think this is a really cool option if you just want something really small, but it would not be a good option for anything with high ceilings or that's wider than like five or six feet. So it's a great option, but just not what I was looking for. So if you've used either of these methods successfully, let us know in the comments so people can read the comments and then they can get some feedback from some people who have actually used these methods because I just researched them and I never actually used them. Next I learned that many greenhouses are made out of chain link fencing top rail and that most of the hardware is also parts from chain link fencing. People use chain link fencing top rail and bend the hoops using a hoop bender. You can buy a kit from Bootstrap Farmer where they'll send you all of the hardware you need to put it together and then you have to go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy the chain link fencing top rail and lumber and bend the top rail yourself using a hoop bender. But I wasn't too sure about my skill set in this at the time, that this would be a viable option for me, and trips to Home Depot and Lowe's just didn't sound attractive. It seemed like there was a lot of room for error, plus what are you going to do, walk around Home Depot and Lowe's with a thousand pounds of steel and lumber in your cart? Like, nah, there's got to be an easier way. A perfect example of this is that when I was building the end walls on this greenhouse, I ran out of self-tapping screws, so I ran to Lowe's to get some more. Well, I got back, I tried the screws, and they were not self-tapping. So I had to go back, return them, get the right ones, and luckily Lowe's is only five minutes from the farm here, so it's not a big deal for me, but you can see how that would get costly if you had to run back and forth all the time to Lowe's and it wasn't very close for you. So then I started googling greenhouse companies and most of the websites I could find didn't actually post their prices, it's like you have to send them a request for a quote. And then I got these quotes back and they're like the $10,000 range and that just wasn't feasible for me at the time. 
But then I learned about this company called Farmer's Friend, and they'll ship you a kit with all the hardware and chain link fencing top rail already bent to size in a kit on a pallet. And I did some research and I decided this was going to be the best option for me. No trips to Home Depot or Lowe's for supplies. No trying to figure anything out. Everything you need just comes together with instructions including the greenhouse plastic. They have two styles of what they call caterpillar tunnels. They're Quonset, which is rounded like this one here, or they're Gothic, which is what I just built, and I have three of them. I like the Gothic style better because it allows for more height on the sides and in the middle. And then they come in 25, 50, or 100 foot lengths. I have four of these in total right now, and they're all 50 feet lengths and 16 feet wide. The ones I have are the Pro Kits, which means they have a solid piece of chain link fencing top rail down the center, and it also has 12 inch lift kits with wind bracing on all the corners. This model currently sells for about $2,500. Then they do sell a more basic kit, which is literally just hoops and the hardware to attach plastic. And rather than the solid pipe down the middle to hold it all together, it's just held together with a strap. And this model costs about $2,000 right now. So honestly, I just spend the extra $500 for the peace of mind that you have a little extra support in wind, rain, and snow. I'm building this greenhouse in an already established no-till garden. So the day before we built it, these beds had crops in them. So the first step for me was to harvest the crops and get the entire area cleaned out. Then we just rake the area as smooth as possible. Because I've got two of these tunnels right next to each other, I had to move everything over and I actually lost a bed to account for the additional flow of watershed in between the tunnels. So just put some thought into where all the extra water is gonna go. This is gonna be different for everyone, but it's something you definitely need to think about. Now my entire garden is on an 8% slope and I've built the entire garden facing down the slope so that water runs in between the tunnels and away from the garden. So I don't really experience any washout when it rains with this method and I've also dug a ditch in between the tunnels and lined them with wood chips and this helps with erosion control so if anything does wash away it's wood chips and not soil particles. I do end up putting additional wood chips in between the tunnels a couple of times a year but this but I do this in all of my pathways around the farm, so it's just a normal part of my operational practices. The context in which you're building your high tunnel could be very different from mine, but it's important that you deal with any grass and weeds before you start building your tunnel. One of the great things about this style of greenhouse is the ground does not need to be perfectly level. Like I said, I'm on an 8% slope and I've never tilled my soil or had it graded. I've just raked it and otherwise I'm just working with what I have, but you might need to prepare your ground accordingly. Once we got the area cleaned out, I had one person measure out the corners and pound in three foot pieces of rebar to mark the corners. Once we had it square, I had her pound rebar in every five feet, which is the hoop spacing we're going with on these tunnels. Meanwhile, my friend Dawn and I were putting the hoops together. Every other hoop on this build gets a piece of wind bracing installed at the top, so we were careful to install them in the correct order and then lean to them up against my shed in the order in which they will be installed. So when we install them, all we need to do is easily walk them into place. It's just a headache to install if you don't have them staged in the correct order. So the next step, my friends and I just walked them into place. The entire process up until this point only took about two hours and the skeleton of the structure is up. Next I installed the center purlin down the middle and I just left it loose. Then I go back and tighten everything, ensuring that they're all exactly five feet apart. Once the center post is installed, I zip tied the irrigation lines for the sprinkler system to the pipe. It's much easier to install any additional hardware like irrigation or trellising wire before you put the plastic on. I did also install trellising wire at this point because I'm planning to grow indeterminate tomatoes in this tunnel next season. One thing I could never seem to figure out when researching how to build a greenhouse is how do they attach the plastic to the greenhouse? Well. 
turns out there's a piece of hardware made specifically for this purpose and it's called channel lock and wiggle wire and you can buy this stuff at Amazon or any greenhouse supply store so I usually just buy it from Amazon I'll leave a link for everything in this build below including a link to the kit and irrigation supplies the next big step is getting the plastic on one thing to always be careful of when building any type of greenhouse structure is that you want the screws bolts in any hardware to be facing inwards so when you install the plastic you don't rip it it comes on a roll and we just rolled it out to the length we needed and then we cut it then the four of us pulled it over the top pretty easily I used wiggle wire to hold it in place on the top when making the final adjustments and then the plastics just held down by rope which zigzags down the tunnel back and forth connecting to the carabiners at the bottom of each hoop this is what secures the plastic to the structure so it doesn't flop around in the wind and then it also allows you to lift up the sides for ventilation and then this is it this is what they send you on the pallet it's just the bones of the structure and then the plastic to go over top of it basically they take the headache out of trying to build your own from scratch and then send you all these parts on a pallet and then the rest is up to you you can customize the structure to be whatever you want it to be now you do need to be able to manage a pallet that weighs about 1,000 to 3,000 pounds. I do have a small tractor with forklifts, but it only lifts about 700 pounds. So what I do is just message farmer's friend and have them ship it to a local freight hub. And then I go pick it up with my truck and have them put it in the back of my truck. Then I drive my truck to a place that's easier to unload using my tractor. This way I'm not out in the middle of the street trying to unload a tractor trailer with an under sufficient tractor for the job. And I can just take my time to make sure everything's unloaded safely and carefully. The next day, I had my friend Max come back, and the two of us measured out beds and walkways and rebuilt them using my typical no-till methods, where I just put compost three to four inches deep in the beds and wood chips in the walkways. Then I did all the finishing touches of setting up the irrigation and building the end walls myself. So since we zip tied the irrigation main line to the center purlin before we installed the plastic, all that was left for me to do was install the water filter with pressure reducer, hook into the water line, and flesh out the system before installing the sprinkler heads. The overhead irrigation system is a kit that you can buy from Farmer's Friend. And all of the drip irrigation I get from a company called DripDepot.com, which is where I typically get all of my irrigation supplies. But whatever you do, definitely do not overlook irrigating your greenhouse since it will never rain in there, otherwise you will need to water everything by hand. I have overhead sprinklers and drip irrigation installed in all of my greenhouses so that I have maximum control over the moisture in them and I have it all controlled using Wi-Fi controlled timer. So I can control every aspect of my irrigation from my phone wherever I have an internet connection. It's actually a super simple setup. It's just a beehive timer from Orbitz that plugs into a regular hose adapter on my house and it comes with this little hub that plugs into any wall outlet. Download the app and you're up and running. The entire Wi-Fi controlled timer was only about $150 and it is well worth the investment. I can't tell you how many trips to the water faucet this inexpensive piece of infrastructure has saved me. And then I also have all of the drip lines on my greenhouses tapped into a line that is fed from my rainwater catchment tank hooked up to the gutters on my house. But it only holds 500 gallons of water right now, so it's also hooked into the Wi-Fi controlled system to supplement with city water as needed. This system is a work in progress, but I'll definitely be posting a video about the irrigation system soon. Now it's around Christmas and New Year's at the time of installing all this so it's pretty cold out. However, I did manage to have a little bit of a warm spell with temps in the 50s during the irrigation setup, but it's not recommended to install irrigation in the winter because it's very difficult to work with the plastic tubing when it's cold. It will kink which causes stress points which will eventually lead to leaks in your line. So generally speaking, you will want to install it on a warm day with temps at least in the 70s. But since I needed to get this installed, I used a blowtorch to lightly heat up the tubing so that it's more pliable. 
Then I use it to expand the connection points for easier installation. These connections can be very challenging to work with when it's cold. After I got the irrigation all dialed in, now it's time to wrap it all up with the scissor door end walls. Now I did not make this up or anything like that. I got the plans from Johnny's Selected Seeds, which is where I order about 90% of all my seeds from. I'll leave a link in the description, but they have pretty detailed instructions on their website, and hopefully with this video, it helps you put it all together. So the first step is to get the supplies. You can order them off the internet probably, but I just went to Home Depot for these supplies. You will need these clips, which Johnny sells for like $10 each, but I just buy the clips from Amazon and they're like $20 for 10 of them. So we're basically building four separate doors, two on each end, and they will open like a curtain. The first step is to get four pieces of chain link fencing top rail and measure the tallest point of your tunnel and cut them accordingly. I bought ten and a half foot pieces and I cut them to nine feet, making sure to cut off the swedged end, because then I took the 18 inch piece that I cut off and I climbed up the ladder and installed it into the piece of top rail that we used as the center purlin. I secured it with a self-tapping screw, then I just drilled a hole in the 9 foot piece of top rail and inserted what they call a tension band that I got from the fencing aisle in Home Depot and held it all together with a carriage bolt. Now my top rail has a loop on it and I can hang it from the piece that I just inserted into the end of the center purling, which is held on with some more self-tapping screws so it doesn't slip off the end of the pipe. I took the other swedged end that we cut off and I pound that one into the ground right next to where the doors come together. This is how we will secure the doors closed using a wire tie. Then I measured the plastic and I cut it to size to fit each door separately. I climb the ladder and attach the plastic to the peak and hold it in place with a few wiggles of the wiggle wire. Then as I come down the ladder, I attach the plastic to the inside of the 9 foot piece of top rail door using the clips that I purchased from Amazon. So the door is locked in place by the wire tie so it doesn't move, with the plastic attached and I can stretch it over to the side where I can install it into the channel lock. Once I have it attached, I can go and make adjustments as needed. Now I can pull it tight and install the wiggle wire all the way up in the same channel lock that's holding down the greenhouse plastic. I find I can usually jam about three wiggle wires deep in one channel lock. And you want to make sure you start at one end and finish at the other, pushing out any slack as you go. Do not start at both ends and meet in the middle. You'll end up with a crinkled door that could catch wind or hold water. Once I had it installed into the channel lock, then I could go back to the clips and make any adjustments as necessary, and then I secure each clip with one self-tapping screw. Now to hold it all together, I picked up these heavy-duty picture frame hanger looking thingies. I found them in the aisle with bungee cords. I think they're for securing bungee cords or something like that. But I attach this with self-tapping screws on the outside of the tunnel over the plastic. Then I just tie it with a piece of extra rope from the wind bracing on the inside of the tunnel. Once you get the first one done, you can go ahead, secure it open so you can work on the next one, and repeat these steps on all four doors. It takes me about 30 minutes per door to install them once I have everything staged, but total time spent on the end walls was pretty much most of the day since I had to go to Home Depot twice. I'll also share with you another type of end wall that I've built on my nursery tunnel, but I would not recommend this type of end wall for several reasons. First, it's made of wood, so the wood will eventually rot and need to be replaced. It will not stand the test of time. Otherwise, these structures will pretty much last a lifetime. But the main reason I don't like this style of end wall is because it blocks the sides of the tunnels on the ends, which makes it difficult to use the paper pot transplanter and the jang cedar, which are my two main planting tools. They also took me twice as long to build. There's far more measuring, cutting, screwing, and overall work involved, and they do not allow for maximum airflow through the tunnel when open. The scissor door option is by far the easiest, cheapest, and most efficient end wall option I've come up with. But let people know in the comments if you disagree and have a better option we should be aware of. 
Now this is the fourth one of these that I've built, and all of the other three I did completely by myself with a little help from my wife or a friend to put the plastic on. So it's definitely possible to build this by yourself. But I figure however you look at it, it's about 30 to 40 hours worth of labor total, including installing the end walls and irrigation, which obviously goes a lot faster with more people. But in my context, the ground was already prepared. So depending on your context, it could take a little longer and you may need to do some groundwork. But the great thing about these tunnels is that the ground does not need to be perfectly level or flat. And honestly, none of my tunnels are perfect construction. I always find flaws in my construction, something isn't perfectly straight, looks crooked, but the truth is that once I put the plastic on and start growing crops, I never think about those imperfections again. The plants don't care, and oftentimes good enough is good enough when it comes to these types of structures. So as promised, let me tell you how I built this absolutely free. In fact, I actually turned a profit from building this high tunnel. There's a department within the USDA called the NRCS, which stands for the National Resource Conservation Program. The Soil Conservation Act was passed April 27, 1935, amid the Dust Bowl, leading to the creation of the Soil Conservation Service, now known as the NRCS. And the NRCS works within agriculture and any type of natural resource conservation you can think of. And they offer high tunnel grants within their EQIP program to assist with soil erosion. And I heard of this program before, but I just figured it was for bigger farms and that I was too small and they wouldn't take me seriously. But after I paid out of pocket for the first three, I figured what the heck. Let me walk in there and talk to these people. So I just walked into my local county USDA office and told them I wanted to apply for a high tunnel grant. They seemed thrilled that I was there. I think it's an underutilized program and there's a lot that goes into actually receiving the grant that's completely out of your control. But I will say this, there's some basic rules and regulations. It's the government you're dealing with here, but it can pay dividends to make these people your friends. I've openly invited them to my operation, which they love coming here. I think my property serves as a model of what can really be done on a small piece of land. I've also recommended the program to some of my friends who have also received the grants, and I think they really appreciate that. Because if they don't use the funds allocated by the government, then they lose the funds for the following year. And I've already applied for another high tunnel grant, which I've not been approved for yet. So stay tuned for another potential greenhouse build in the future. But my point is that a lot of people are standoffish just because they work for the government. But these people are here to help you be successful. Once I was approved, they came out, do a site evaluation, and the USDA rule states that they will not put grant funds towards a high tunnel on land that is more than a 5% grade and my entire garden is on an 8% slope. They came out, surveyed it, and told me I would have to have the land graded. And I explained to them in detail my no-till systems, which rely heavily on wood chip mulch for erosion control, and that having the land graded is going to be more detrimental to the soil health than being on an 8% slope. I mean, I spent the last five years making the soil in my backyard like potting soil. I told them that it is not worth the money to have a skid steer back here, and they said, okay, let me send that to the top. And because of my no-till practices, which rely heavily on mulches, they got the head of the NRCS to approve my high tunnel to be installed on an 8% slope. So I share this with you because it's not always easy. You might hit some speed bumps, the whole process took about a year, it's a lot of work, and they're not just going to hand you money. You're not entitled to anything. You need to put the money up front, and then once you build it, they will generously reimburse you. And they pay by the square foot. So for instance, one of my friends took his grant and built a $16,000 heated greenhouse, and they paid for $8,000 of it and then he paid the rest out of pocket. And I think that's often how it works. The grant usually pays for a portion, not the whole thing. 
But I thought the opposite. I thought, well, I can probably build this for less than they pay. And I did. So I actually profit a few hundred dollars for building this greenhouse. And at the end of the day, the NRCS invested a pretty large sum of money into my business through several grants that I don't need to pay back. But one last thing to understand is that the grants are for the erodible land upon which it is built. It is not for you personally or your business. So if I sell my house, the greenhouse that was paid for with the grant money will have to come with the house. But there are time limitations. After like five years, then I could take it with me. One quick announcement before I sign off. I've leased a new farm for the 2024 season. So stay tuned to find out how I leased a farm for zero dollars and see how I'm going to turn this new property into a no-till oasis. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you got something out of it. Make sure to like the video if you like the video and subscribe if you're not already. And I'll see y'all in the next one.